dear students, I welcome you all for the session 5 of uh, module 4 of analog electronics. So, myself Nataraj Vijapur, I am associate professor in KLE, Dr. M. S. Sheshagiri, College of Engineering and Technology. Okay. I am continuing with my session now. Next, we will be moving to session 5. Okay, so, till now in the module 4, uh, we had started with feedback amplifiers, we had discussed feedback concepts, feedback connection types, practical feedback circuits, oscillator operation also, we have started with oscillators also, oscillator operation also we have discussed, FET phase shift operation also we have discussed, today we will proceed further. In this session, uh, we will be discussing first the phase shift oscillator, then we will be moving to tuned circuit oscillator, then crystal oscillator. As I discussed oscillators in the previous session, oscillators are the most important constituent in any electronic system, entire communication systems and all the modern gadgets are based on the oscillators. Uh, at the end of this chapter, you will be able to interpret the operation of phase shift oscillator and tuned frequency oscillators. Also, you will be in a position to design the oscillator for the desired frequency. Okay. So, that is the most important thing. At the outcome, you will be able to design an oscillator for a particular frequency. For this uh, session, I have referred the following textbooks or the content is prepared us using the material from Robert Boylstead, Louis Nashelsky, Electronic Devices and Circuits, Pearson 10th edition, Adele Cedra, Kenneth Smith, Microelectronic Circuits Theory and Applications, Oxford University Press, Milman and Halkias, Integrated Electronics, Bakshi and Godse, Analog Electronics. So, the content primarily I have taken from all of these four textbooks, Boylstead, Cedra, Milman and Bakshi. Okay. To begin with our session, uh, let us go back, uh, let us revise the concepts of uh, oscillator first. So, we have discussed about in the beginning, Berkshon criteria for any electronic system to act as an oscillator, okay, Berkshon criteria has to be satisfied. What Berkshon criteria states is, the total phase shift around the loop should be 360 degrees and the loop gain should be unity. Then naturally, question comes into picture, what do you mean by a loop? So, here in case of an oscillator, the loop consists of an amplifier and a feedback network. Oscillators are self generating circuits, that is they make use of DC source and they give you a form of desired frequency, desired shape, okay, desired amplitude. So, uh, we have also discussed that oscillations in the electronic circuits your oscillators generate oscillations using some noise voltage. Okay. And what do you mean by total phase shift around the 360 degree in the sense for a positive feedback to happen, the phase shifted signal should be in phase with the incoming signal. That is, if you are using an amplifier which introduces 180 degree phase shift, then the feedback network should also introduce a 180 degree phase shift, then the total phase shift around the loop will be 360 degrees. The product of the open loop gain A of the amplifier and the feedback network gain beta. Okay. So, it is not an open loop, it is a amplifier which is a closed loop amplifier only. So, the product of this amplifier gain as well as beta, both the product should be equal to 1. Okay, then only the oscillations will be sustained in the circuitry. So, this we have already discussed. So, again recalling the general phase shift oscillator, 
a general phase shift oscillator, what we discussed last class was an RC phase shift oscillator, which consists of amplifier and a feedback network consisting of three RC sections. So, if an amplifier introduces 180 degree, each of these RC sections will introduce 60 degree and together there is a feedback network will generate a 180 degree phase shift. So, 180 plus 180 together will be 360 degree. Okay. So, this is the case, these are the cases when we use the amplifiers having inversion that is 180 degree phase shift. I have an example of next oscillator, which I am going to discuss. It is a Wayne bridge oscillator. Okay. So, this Wayne bridge oscillator is different from the oscillators we discussed till now. We have discussed transistorized RC phase shift oscillator, where transistor amplifier introduced 180 degree phase shift. We discussed about FET phase shift oscillator, where FET introduced 180 degree phase shift. So, the feedback network, it was required that it also introduces a 180 degree phase shift. Now, here we are using a Wayne bridge oscillator, makes use of an amplifier, which does not introduces a 180 degree phase shift. That is, as you can see from the diagram, the oscillator uses an op amp. So, this op amp does not introduce any phase shift, it is configured in a non-inverting mode. So, this introduces a 0 degree phase shift. So, for this to happen, right. So, if this op amp I am using, which does not introduce any phase shift in the waveform, then the wind bridge, then the feedback network, which I use should also not, in, should not introduce any phase shift. So, here we are using an RC bridge, which is called as Wayne bridge, which consists of series arm okay, as well as parallel arm of RC networks. So, it consists of a lead network as well as LAD network. So, at a particular condition, the bridge will be balanced. When the bridge will be balanced, the phase shift, phase shift introduced will be 0. Okay. So, there is a condition for the balancing of the bridge. Uh, this condition needs to be satisfied when you are designing R 3 by R 4 should be equal to R 1 by R 2 plus C 2 by C 1. The vein bridge here does not introduce any phase shift, whereas previous circuitry is made use of R C feedback network which introduced a phase shift, but here you have lead and lag arm. So, it cancels out when the bridge is balanced, there is no phase shift in the output. Okay. And you have bridge is actually R 1 C 1 series arm and R 2 C 2 parallel arm. You have R 3 and R 4 also, these are part of feedback network. So, R 3 and R 4 constitute a feedback network. The feedback voltage from this R 3, R 4 potential divider network that is especially across R 4 is applied to inverting terminal. So, you have feedback also happening. Okay. So, the amplifier output is connected between okay, the connected across the Bain bridge consisting of R 1 C 1 and R 2 C 2 feedback network is connected to the output of feedback network is connected to the inverting terminal. Okay. So, here important thing is there is no phase shift introduced in vein bridge as well as there is no phase shift introduced in the op amp. Now, now how the oscillation start as is usual. So, uh, at room temperature you have some noise voltages across these resistances as well as capacitances. So, these different noise voltages travel through the op amp, they get amplified Okay, they get amplified, so and they appear across this vein bridge. They get amplified and appear across the vein bridge. Only one noise voltage which doesn't undergo, okay, which undergoes 360 degrees phase shift or zero degree phase shift will be amplified and it will be available at the output. 
So, these R 3 and R 4 constitute a feedback network for the op amp that is very very important. It is a potential divider network which is present in the op amp aspect which we have discussed previously op amp in the non inverting configuration. So, these provide uh, feedback. Okay. Whereas, R 1 C 1 is the feedback network for oscillations, R 3, R 4 are for the amplifier or for the op amp. The generated frequency of oscillations here are given by f naught equals to 1 upon 2 pi square root of R 1 C 1 R 2 C 2. So, here the feedback network decides the frequency of oscillations. Okay. Continuing with that, if R 1 and R 2 if you keep the same value as r and c 1 and c 2 equal to c, then f naught or the frequency of generated oscillations will be 2 pi r c. So, you can design okay, for depending on the desired frequency, you can select the value of resistance and capacitance. Okay. So, you can assume a value of resistance and generate the required frequency of oscillations. So, designing of an oscillator is very, very simple here. Now, to achieve a loop gain here, the minimum value of R 3 by R 4 should be equal to 2 and closed loop gain of the op amp should be greater than 3. Okay. If these conditions are satisfied, then the oscillations will be sustained in the Wiener bridge oscillator. Okay. So, this is an important point to be noted here. Okay. So, this is about Wiener bridge. So, we, we can have one more oscillator, which makes use of op amp, which is in inverting configuration. Okay. So, that is R c phase shift oscillator using an op amp. So, you can design an R c oscillator using op amps also. This figure illustrates R c oscillator using op amp. So, here operational amplifier is connected in an inverting configuration that is it provides a 180 degree phase shift. So, the op amp it is used as an amplifier voltage gain amplifier connected in an inverting amplifier. Okay. So, you can note down this op amp connected in inverting configuration. You have feedback network. This feedback network consists of three R c sections. So, each R c section introduces a 60 degree phase shift 60, 60, 60. So, together it is a 180 degree phase shift. This phase shifted signal is available as an input to the inverting terminal of the op amp. Okay. So, it is an inverting amplifier feedback network generates the output which is fed back as an input to the op amp which is amplified again applied to the feedback network. One noise voltage Okay, which uh, undergoes 360 degree phase shift or 0 degree phase shift will survive and the, that will be amplified and it takes the form of a sinusoidal oscillations. Okay. The gain of the op amp should be greater than 29 and here the frequency of generated oscillations is as discussed in the beginning 1 upon 2 pi r c root 6. Okay. So, we have discussed four varieties. Okay. We have discussed about four varieties of R c oscillators. We discussed transistorized R c oscillator, F e t oscillator, Wayne bridge oscillator as well as op amp oscillator. What all we can ask the aspect here? Circuit is simple to design. What are the advantages? Circuit is simple to design in the sense f naught is equals to 1 upon 2 pi r c root 6. So, depending on the frequency you want, you can select the appropriate value of resistance and capacitance and you can develop the sinusoidal oscillations of that particular frequency. But r and c can be varied only to produce an output over a audio frequency range. That is, you cannot go more than 13 or 12 kilohertz here. Okay. The range is limited. Okay. You produce a sinusoidal oscillations are possible. It is a fixed frequency oscillator. Now, the R c oscillator which we have used other than Wayne bridge 
okay, which consisted of three RC sections. It is a fixed frequency oscillator. It can generate only one frequency at a given time. You cannot change the value of R and C simultaneously to make it a variable frequency. Of course, vein bridge, in case of vein bridge, R 1 and C 1 can be mounted on the common shaft and you can achieve a variable frequency. Now, now when it comes most important aspect that is when you adapt in practical frequency stability is poor. Why frequency stability is poor? It is because of temperature and aging. Temperature affects the value of R and C, temperature affects the stability of the amplifier. So, the frequency of generated oscillations will change okay? and the components R and C feedback network components which determine frequency, their values change with respect to aging. So, the frequency of generated oscillations also change. So, the stability is poor here. Okay? So, these all are the advantages, major disadvantages. F stability, you cannot have a variable frequency, components are affected by temperature and you can have only audio frequency range. Okay. Only thing you can have is simple to design, audio frequencies you can generate, sinusoidal you can generate, but these drawbacks limit the application of RC oscillators. Right? Hope you have noted on this. Next, we will move to one important element which is widely used in communication applications in all the electronic circuits also which is tuned oscillator circuits. Okay. So, a limitation of uh, RC oscillators is that it can produce only the oscillations in the audio range, whereas tuned oscillators they make use of inductance and capacitance, they make use of inductance and capacitance L and C, okay, they are used in the feedback circuit to generate oscillations. You can achieve a frequency from the range of kilohertz to several gigahertz. So, variation is large here, you can achieve till gigahertz. Okay. So, that is LC circuit, which earlier circuits used R and C in the feedback network and now the circuitry which I am going to use will be using inductance and capacitance in the feedback circuit. The frequency of generated oscillations here are given by 1 upon 2 pi root L c. Okay. So, when I say the tuned circuit oscillators, tuned circuit oscillators make use of L and C in the feedback path. Okay. So, this L and C or the feedback network is responsible for generating the oscillations. Now, let us see this L and C circuit which is also called as tank circuit. It is used as a resonant circuit also as well as it can generate frequencies also. We have seen an RLC resonant circuit. Uh, previously or in electrical circuits where it accepts, it resonates to only one particular frequency. Okay. Here, L and C are connected in parallel. So, this gives rise to oscillations. Let us look at basic uh, generation concept of this L and C. Okay. Now, this L and C circuit can be used in the feedback path. Now, how I can use this in a feedback path? So, as to generate the oscillations. Okay. Let us assume that capacitance is initially charged by applying some voltage. Okay. So, this capacitor is initially charged. It this charged capacitor is connected across an inductor. 
Okay. So, this charged capacitor is connected across the inductor. Now, this inductor is uncharged, capacitance is charged. Its general property if, is if the current flowing through the capacitor changes, it opposes it by discharging it. So, whatever is the energy stored in the capacitor discharges and it recharges making the capacitor making the inductor plus minus. So, whatever the energy stored in the capacitor will be stored in the inductor and this will be stored in the form of a magnetic field across the inductor making this end plus this end minus. Once the entire energy which is stored in the capacitor is transferred to the inductor. Now, this inductor which contained energy. Now, current flowing through this inductor also changes now. Now, the capacitor has lost its charge. This charge has come to inductor. This inductor being unstable because current flowing through it changes because capacitance has fully discharged. So, this also discharges in an opposite direction recharging the capacitor making this end positive and this end negative. So, whatever is the energy stored in the inductor has transferred to capacitor. Now, again the capacitor inductor once it fully discharges capacitive current charging current becomes 0. Now, the capacitor again discharges making the capacitor being recharged in the opposite direction. Okay, this action continuously happens. So, this continuous charging and discharging, okay, if you take an voltage or if you tap an output across this inductor. So, this will be building up of capacitor charge or an inductor charge, discharging of the inductor or a capacitor, recharging in the opposite direction. Okay. So, this appears this takes form of a sinusoidal oscillations with every transfer of energy between inductor and capacitor some part of energy is lost. Okay. So, these oscillations will go on decreasing with respect to amplitude and after some time they will die out. Okay. So, you need to support this via one energy source. So, if I use an amplifier which supports this LC circuitry or tank circuitry, okay, then I can get oscillations of a fixed frequency and amplitude. So, I can get an oscillations here, okay, which are sustained. So, I can use an inductor okay, and frequency of generated oscillations is 1 upon 2 pi root L c. Okay. So, this way you can whatever the frequency will be generated you can change if you change the value of inductor and capacitance and you can change till several gigahertz. Okay. So, this is the L c circuitry. Okay. This is how this L c tank circuit can be employed can be connected to the amplifier output and this oscillations can be sustained. Okay. The same thing is being shown here in the block diagram. Okay. So, this is the block diagram of tuned circuit oscillator or an L c tuned circuit oscillator, which consists of an amplifier and then you have a feedback network. So, this feedback network is a L c circuitry. Now, uh, one of the arm either inductor or capacitance can be broken down into two arms and you can apply a feedback voltage to the amplifier. Okay. So, this is a basic form of L c oscillator an amplifier along with this inductance and capacitance. So, one arm here can be inductance, another two arms can be capacitive, one arm can be inductor, this arm these two arms can be inductive and one more arm can be capacitive also. So, depending on that you can have two types of oscillators, okay. depending on whether you are 
bro breaking down inductance into two parts or capacitance into two parts, you are having two types of oscillators. Okay. So, uh, this is regarding block diagram and the concept of LC circuitry. So, LC circuitry or a tank circuit can be used to generate oscillations okay. and the same tank circuit accepts only one frequency, it resonates. Okay. It is a parallel LC circuit which resonates at one particular frequency. Okay. Now, you can have two types of uh, say tuned circuits. Either you can make use of Hartley oscillator. This Hartley oscillator consists of feedback network, which is of two inductive and one capacitive impedances. Whereas, Colpitt's oscillator, it consists of an inductive and two capacitive impedances. Okay. So, this, these two oscillators are popularly used in the design okay, of os, uh, oscillators or waveform generator. Okay. Now, this is the circuit diagram. This is the circuit diagram of first Hartley oscillator circuit. Okay. So, I hope uh, all of you can note down this okay. Hartley oscillator circuit. What all you can observe here? Okay. You can observe an transistor amplifier, okay, which is voltage divider biased. So, okay. so, you have a supply voltage VCC, the resistance is R 1 and R 2, this form a potential divider network okay. and then you have a R e, this R e provides a stability, then you have a bypass capacitor C C which is called as emitter bypass capacitor, which ensures AC signal amplification. Okay. Then you have a transistor, which is biased. Then what you can see at the collector, at the collector I have LC tank circuit. So, here there is an LC tank circuit, uh, you can see an LC tank circuit which is the inductor L being broken down into two parts L 1 and L 2. Okay. It is broken down into two parts and you have mutual inductance also, where this oscillations are coupled and the output is taken. You have one more important part, radio frequency choke or R f choke. Now, this R f choke acts as short circuit for DC and it may happen that any power supply variations or say any signal in the power line vary, any variation in the power line signal can affect the frequency of oscillations. To block them, this inductance is used. This is a very high inductance, okay, which acts as a short circuit for DC okay, and opposes any sub power supply variation. So, it acts as open circuit for power supply signals other than DC. Okay. So, thus this ensures stability. Okay. Uh, the circuitry may be, can be viewed separately here. See here, emitter provides a phase shift of 180 degree. So, you have a common emitter amplifier, this provides 180 degree phase shift. This LC circuitry also provides further 180 degree phase shift. Okay. You can visualize this circuitry in a simple manner also. Okay. You can visualize this circuitry in a simple manner. Okay. Okay. So, this is the potential divider network, which consists of R 1 and R 2. You have a transistor amplifier R e. C, okay. Then, so here your radio frequency choke, okay, uh, which removes the power line variation. Then output of this transistor, okay, is connected to your broken down inductance L1 and L2 in the capacitance C, and this is the feedback voltage V f, okay, which goes okay, as an input. Okay. This goes an input via coupling capacitor C c to the output. 
so you can split ok this is my amplifier which introduces 180 degree phase shift and this is feedback network which introduces 180 degree phase shift. So, you have separated the circuitry in an amplifier and then the feedback network ok. So, the thing which is shown in the slide here in the slide this LC circuit has been placed on the collector ok. So, here the frequency of generated oscillations is given by 2 pi square root of L equivalent into C, because I have L 1 and L 2 they are connected in series. So, L equivalent will be L 1 plus L 2, ok, because inductances L 1 and L 2 are connected in series, ok. So, this is how you can get a desired frequency of oscillations. So, come to this diagram now. Now, you can very well visualize this diagram consisting of a tank circuit. So, in the tank circuit is directly placed in the collector here. Okay. So, the frequency of generated oscillations is L equivalent equals to L 1 plus L 2 plus 2 m because you have a mutual inductance present here. The circuitry which I discussed on the board, I did not consider mutual inductance, mutual inductance to be 0. So, here if I consider a mutual inductance, you will get the frequency of oscillations. Now, what is required here for a transistor current gain HFE, HFE denotes the current gain of the transistor amplifier. So, HFE should be equal to L 1 plus mutual inductance divided by L 2 plus mutual inductance. If mutual inductance is absent, then it is L 1 by L 2. So, it should be greater than this ratio, then the oscillations will be sustained. Okay. So, this is our Hartley oscillator. So, Hartley oscillator made use of two inductive reactances and one capacitive impedances. Total inductance is series connection of the inductances. So, if you vary the inductances, the frequency of oscillations changes and this can generate a frequencies in the range of megahertz to several gigahertz and it is widely used in the communication applications. Now, uh, we have used, uh, we have seen transistorized Hartley oscillator. Now, BJT Hartley oscillator we saw. Now, you can have field effect transistor FET Hartley oscillator also. Okay. So, the FET amplifier, first let us look at this simple conceptual diagram. Okay. So, you can see that the FET oscillator is connected in a voltage divider bias configuration okay. and the output of this FET amplifier is connected to feedback network consisting of L and C. Okay. So, this output of the feedback circuit is further connected as an input to the FET amplifiers. Okay. So, now the F this same concept can be extended here. So, you have L 1 and L 2, L 1 and L 2 connected in series. Okay. The same circuit you can visualize, this is a FET, a radio frequency choke, a capacitive coupling capacitor C C output of this is connected to one end of the inductor. So, you have one end of the inductor, another end is grounded. So, another end is grounded, another end of the inductor L 2 is grounded and it is acting as a generating an input to feedback network. This L and C together forms a tank circuit here. So, only the arrangement is different. Okay. So, that is how you can take care. Okay. In the previous BJT oscillator also, you can previous BJT oscillators also, this L 1 and L 2 is grounded and this feedback is connected from this L C tank circuit to the input of the amplifier. Okay. So, that is how the configuration is the same thing, whatever we have discussed instead of BJT, you will be having FET here. Okay. So, the same circuitry, this introduces FET introduces 180 degree, here feedback network also introduces a 180 degree phase shift. Okay. 
So, this is a FET oscillator, okay. further the gain should be decided here. So, here also frequency of uh, when we come to Hartley oscillator, here also oscillations start with a noise voltage. Now, what is important here in both transistorized Hartley oscillator and FET Hartley oscillator, what is most important here is that uh, LC circuitry not only generates oscillations and it is tuned to that frequency only. So, the F naught equals to 1 upon 2 pi root L c. So, this frequency L c rejects the L c tank circuitry rejects other frequencies and it accepts only one frequency. So, it has higher frequency stability compared to R c oscillator, because it, it generates the oscillations of a fixed frequency and rejects other circuitries. It is a resonant circuitry also. So, only one frequency survives and gets amplified and it will be stability will be higher compared to R c oscillator, because of this tuning property of L and C. Okay. Fine. Now, you have one more version, the way we have discussed about uh, Hartley oscillator, you have transistorized Colpitts oscillator also. So, what the transistorized Colpitts oscillator consists of? It consists of a voltage divider by a amplifier, it consists of a voltage divider by a amplifier and an L c tank circuitry. Let us look at the same operation. Okay. So, it is now what we are going to discuss is Colpitts. Okay. In case of uh, Colpitts oscillator, you have only the feedback network is changed. Okay. Earlier, the feedback network consisted of inductances. Now, the feedback network will be consisting of capacitances, which are C 1 and C 2. and an inductance L. Okay. So, this L c tank will be applied as an input to the transistor amplifier. Only changes instead of two inductive reactances, which we used in Hartley oscillator, we made use of capacitive reactances. Okay. So, the same thing you have voltage divider bias amplifier. So, this voltage divider bias transistor, which is connected in a C e configuration. Here R 1 and R 2 are provide a voltage divider bias, R e provides stability of an amplifier, C e ensures C c signal amplification for bypassing them. Okay, it is emitter bypass capacitance. R f choke separates the power supply signal variations okay. and output of this inductance or output of this transistor amplifier is given as an input to tank circuit. Now, this tank circuit resonates to only one particular frequency. What is the frequency of generated oscillations? This was Hartley oscillator earlier. Now, it is Colpitts oscillator, which is 1 upon 2 pi root L c equivalent, okay. c equivalent, where c equivalent is equals to c 1 into c 2 divided by C 1 plus C 2, okay? because these capacitances are connected in series. Effective capacitances of two C 1 capacitance connected in series will be C 1 C 2 divided by C 1 plus C 2. Okay? So, this circuitry provides a 180 degree phase shift, then we have L c tank circuit also by its nature, L c tank circuit by its nature it introduces a 180 degree phase shift. So, total 360 degree phase shift or positive feedback is satisfied here. That is how the oscillations are generated in the circuitry. Okay. So, this circuitry is Colpitts oscillator. Okay. And, uh, very, very important is H f e. When the value of H f e comes into picture, H f e should be greater than this value C 1 
C 2 divided by C 1, because of the connection what is shown here C 2 divided by C 1 to generate the oscillations. Okay. So, uh, this is how you can employ. So, we, we have seen that Colpitt's oscillator. Let us come back to this version. Now, you can visualize this uh, version of a Colpitt's oscillator. Both feedback as well as amplifier are integrated here. Okay, They are part of the same circuitry. So, you have a radio frequency choke C 1 and C 2. What is the purpose here? Divide the voltage. Okay, so, that you can apply only part of the voltage to the uh, amplifier. Okay, so, generated voltage which is between V f can be applied here through the bypass capacitance through the base and emitter of a transistor amplifier. So, the inductance here is not broken down or in the previous case Hartley was broken, Hartley oscillator inductance L was broken down. Now, the L is not broken down, instead capacitance is split into two parts C 1 and C 2. This being the mutual inductance, okay, the output is coupled here. Here mutual inductance does not come into picture as the as with respect to frequency of oscillations, because capacitance feedback, we are dividing a capacitance voltage and we are supplying it as a back to the culprits oscillator. Okay. So, this is L c oscillators. Now, although we see that frequency stability is high in case of L c compared to R c, because L c itself is a tank circuit or a tuned circuit, which accepts only one frequency 1 upon 2 pi root L c and rejects other frequencies. But still, it has also some factors which contribute to stability. Let us look here. Factors affecting the frequency stability, changes in temperature. Okay. Now, transistor stability is affected by the temperature. Values of L and C are also affected by the temperature. So, values of L and C change with respect to temperature also. So, this affects the stability, frequency stability of L C oscillator. You may be there may be loading effect also. This oscillator may be generating the oscillations for circuit, some circuit. Its effective load also may vary the tank circuit resistance. So, due to which frequency also will vary or stability of the frequency is affected. We know that in transistor, a collector to base junction is reverse biased. So, you have a reverse biased uh, collector to base junction. Okay. So, this affects the operating frequency, because reverse biased junction of transistor is having a one capacitance, which is depletion capacitance. So, that may also come in picture along with tank circuit. So, the operating frequency may also change. Okay. These all are the factors, which significantly affect the L c network or the frequency stability of L c network. Okay. So, we have discussed about R c and we have discussed about L c circuits. L c circuits provides a higher frequency range and it has a higher stability compared to the R c circuitries. Okay. Now, you have one more important part here. Okay. The next oscillator, what we are going to discuss is the crystal oscillator. Okay. Now, this crystal oscillator is the oscillator which is widely used in all kinds of uh, your gadgets, computers, even in all the communication applications, your mobiles, everywhere you have a crystal being a part of it. Okay. Now, what are these crystals? Okay. These are nothing but naturally occurring uh, crystals. Okay. Uh, there are three crystals which are quartz, Thermoline and Rochelle salt. Okay. There are three kinds of crystals. These three crystals exhibit a phenomenon called as piezoelectric effect. Now, what is meant by this piezoelectric effect? Okay. Now, these crystals have a property that whenever they are subjected to mechanical vibrations, they generate or they vibrate with an electrical 
potential being generated across the opposite faces of crystal. On the other hand, if you apply AC voltage to the crystal, it vibrates mechanically, it vibrates mechanically. These mechanical vibrations give rise to one fixed frequency okay? and this fixed frequency is proportional to the thickness of the crystal, it is inversely proportional to the thickness of the crystal. Okay. There are three kinds of crystals which are used. You have a quartz crystal, you have tourmaline crystal, 